times of inflation, it's tough to choose the right investment and business. There are so many options out there and each individual has their own preferences and ideas. The legendary investment guru Warren Buffett shares his opinion on which investments are worst and best in an inflationary environment. It goes without saying that he is not only the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, but he is one of the most successful investors in the history of mankind. This video will give you a better understanding of what financial guru Warren Buffett thinks about investing during times of inflation, the best investment for an inflationary environment, and more. In accordance with the Warren Buffett Inflation Investment Thesis, I have divided assets and businesses into three major types. Please make sure you watch this video until the end and you not skip any part so that you don't miss out on the information that could potentially change your life. Also, please give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Number 1. Currency Denominated Assets Warren Buffett says, If we dropped $1 million of cash into every household in the United States today, everybody would feel very good, except the people that invested in things that were denominated in dollars. When it comes to owning investments during times of inflation, this is the worst investment to own. The worst asset to possess in an inflationary situation is, of course, the currency that is being inflated. Money lying in a bank account or hidden beneath your mattress will be eaten away. Month after month, week after week, day after day, year after year. So, if we anticipate dollar inflation, we should avoid holding dollars in our portfolios. Bonds issued by governments or firms with coupons in the inflated currency will also struggle. If I give you $100 and tell you that you'll get $10 every year for it and your whole $100 back in 10 years, it may not seem like such a horrible bargain. After all, it's a 10% yearly return. However, if we make this agreement and the dollar experiences 10% inflation, which isn't unthinkable, it happened in the 70s and 80s. You'll make no real value returns on the trade. Number 2. Inefficient Assets This comprises assets such as paintings, a home, gold, and so on. These assets are not worthless to hold during periods of inflation. Since all else being equal, they should retain their true value. They will not, however, improve your purchasing power. The same may be said for any of the inefficient assets. That unique painting will still be simply one uncommon painting in 10 years. It will never multiply if you want to do more than merely keep your purchasing power with inefficient assets. You're going to have to figure out how afraid people will be of inflation in the future, which is very hard. Number 3. Income Assets Before I continue, comment down below your country. In that way, I will know exactly where you're from. So in the future, I can make sure that every single video I release is meant for you. So drop your country's name in the comments down below and make sure to watch this video until the end and do not skip any part so that you won't miss out on those important tips. Now, let's get back to the video. Inefficient assets that we discussed earlier are excellent for preserving their actual worth during inflationary periods, but we want to raise their real value. Income assets are assets that generate valued services or products. You are aware that Warren Buffett enjoys investing in stocks and businesses. However, not all businesses are made equal. The first sort of business to avoid during inflationary times is one that requires massive additional expenditure merely to stay afloat. Warren Buffett says, Unfortunately, most businesses will not come out well in real terms during inflation. Their earnings may go up a fair amount over time but they're compelled to put more and more dollars into the business just to stay in the same place. You know, the worst kind of a business is one that makes you put more money on the table all the time and doesn't give you greater earnings. Here's an example that hopefully will explain the concept. Paul sells pens at a local elementary school. Every year, he places a large purchase from wholesaler for $1,000 worth of pens, which he will sell at school for the next 12 months. He has a 10% profit margin, so after a year of selling, he has $1,100 in his pocket. He decides to place a second order of the same quantity of pens for $1,000 the next year while giving himself $100 in returns. Let's explore what happens to Paul's business if inflation averages 10% every year. 
To keep things simple, Paul has $1,100 from his sales at the end of the year. However, when he tries to purchase from wholesalers again the following year, he discovers that the price has risen. Pens are now 10% more costly, and Paul must pay the entire $1,100 to purchase the same quantity as last year. He sighs and chooses to order anyhow. The following year, Paul boosts his revenues, thanks to inflation, to $1,210, but again, he must invest that same amount merely to replenish his inventory in the next year. Take note that if this continues, Paul will never be able to withdraw any funds from his business. In the actual world, they are frequently businesses with low returns on physical assets. Real quick, if you guys are enjoying this video, which I've put a lot of time and energy into, I would really appreciate it if you guys tap the like button and make sure you subscribe with notification on. And if we get 2,000 likes on this video, I'll drop a brand new video next week about the same topic. Now, let's get back to the video. Here is a good type of income asset. Here's the example for this business type. Linda develops tutorial videos and sells them on Udemy. This training costs her roughly $1,000 to develop. She now receives $100 from Udemy each year. In other words, when there is no inflation, she earns a 10% return, exactly like Paul. What happens if there is a 10% increase in inflation? Linda makes $100 in her first year, as planned. Then comes inflation. What's great about Linda's business is that she doesn't need to put up any further funds to keep it going. And if she decides to raise the course fee due to inflation, she will make a profit of $110 the next year. She will be making a profit of $121 the following year, with all of it being free cash flow. It's money she can take with her and spend elsewhere or reinvest to expand her courses and develop new ones. Basically, you are looking for low capital requirements and high returns on assets. Businesses with strong brands, such as Coke or C's Candy, fit in here. Also, pretty much any technology company with massive economies of scale. Warren Buffett said, You can argue that if you own some business that required very little capital investment, and had real flexibility of price during an inflationary period so that people would continue to give up a half an hour of work, of their own work, every month to buy your product and you leveraged it. Then you might even beat inflation to some extent. Unfortunately, not even this category of investments is a guaranteed bet, especially if everyone begins to believe it is. You can overpay even for businesses that need minimal capital input and have a lot of pricing flexibility. A good business isn't always a good buy, though it's a great place to start looking. Other income assets, for example farmland and rental properties, which Buffett rarely discusses, are likely to fall somewhere in between this category. There is always some cash required to maintain these assets operational, but they may also be leveraged quite a bit. The greatest way to defend against inflation is to invest in yourself and make yourself useful to others. Having said that, you'll always command a certain percentage of the cost of other people's output, whether that is bitcoins, rocks, gold, or dollars, and you won't have to worry about the value of the currency. Warren Buffett says in his own words, the best investment at all of all, I mean, if you're the leading brain surgeon in town or the leading lawyer in town or the, whatever it may be, you don't have to keep re-educating yourself to be that in current terms. You bought your expertise when you went to medical school or law school in old dollars, and you don't have to keep reinvesting, and you retain your earning power in current dollars. A person's own earning power is the best form of protection against inflation. If you contribute anything valuable to society, you'll always receive a portion of the goods and services produced by others. Now, if you want to watch more videos like this, then you need to watch this video right here. This video is one of the best on this channel. You can click this video to watch further.